Hi, I'm the Reverend Dave Jagger. I am the Community of Faith Stewardship Lead within the Philanthropy Unit of the General Council Offices. And I am a supporter of Mission and Service. I'd like to begin today with a piece of scripture from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 22, verses 34 to 40. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. I'd like to introduce you to someone today. This is George. George is a lot like all of us. George goes about his life like most of the rest of us. One of the things that does make George a bit different from many other people, though, is George loves God. George takes seriously the command of Jesus to love God with everything you are, heart, soul, and mind. George loves God. And it makes George feel pretty good to know that God loves him. To think about all the things that God has done for George, because God loves George. God created George. God loves George. God came to be with George and Jesus. God forgives George and renews George. God shares with George everything that God has, that George has. Yep, George loves God. And because George loves God, George spends some of his time on a regular basis praying, you know, spending time in God's presence, reading scripture, learning about God's relationship with people. But George doesn't stop there. George also takes seriously the command of Jesus to love your neighbor as yourself. George believes that God loves other people just as much as God loves George. George doesn't always understand that, but he believes it nonetheless. So when you watch George, you often might see him participate in a Christian community. George comes to worship regularly and helps out around his church. You might see him serve and help the people around him. You might see him give generously. George knows it's important both to his faith life and to his church to share from what God has shared with him. And you might see George tell people about God's love for them and invite them to join in. So this is George. Now this is George's bubble. Inside George's bubble are all the people that he meets and all the places that he goes, where he loves God with everything he is and loves his neighbor as himself. But George has a problem. Along the way, George has noticed that there are lots of other people outside his bubble who also need to know God loves them and that they need loving themselves. This bothers George because he knows how good it feels to love God and love other people, and he wants everyone to feel that good and to be loved. But he's only one person and can only do so much. So George thinks about this and prays about this, and George comes up with a solution. If I can only do so much by myself, thinks George, then I need some help. Now, this is Florence. Florence is a lot like George and a lot like all of us. Florence also takes seriously the command of Jesus to love God with everything you are, heart, soul, and mind. Florence really loves God. Like George, Florence also believes that God loves other people just as much as God loves her. And so she takes seriously the command of Jesus to love your neighbor as yourself. 
Florence and George do a lot of the same things. And so just like George, Florence has come to the same place of realizing that she can only do so much on her own to love her neighbors as she loves herself. So one day, George talks to Florence about this problem he has. Well, Florence just can't believe her ears since she has the same problem. And so they decide to work together. In addition to loving God and loving their neighbors, they start to pool some of their resources. Doing that, they discover, helps them love even more people and let even more people know that they're loved by God. This makes everyone feel good, too. But eventually, the two of them once again find they can only do so much. But this time, they have a plan. George talks to Juan, and Florence talks to Lee. And now there are four of them, each loving God and loving their neighbors, and pooling some of their resources so that they can love even more people and let even more people know that they are loved by God. This makes even more people feel good, too. And I bet you can guess where this is going. That's right. The pattern keeps repeating itself. As more and more people are welcomed and loved and in turn love God and love their neighbors and then pool some of their resources, so that they can love even more people and let even more people know they are loved by God. And God feels pretty good about this too. So today, I invite each of you to be like George and Florence and Juan and Lee and consider sharing some of what you have for the larger work that we can only do together through mission and service. Your gifts to mission and service Make it possible for you to love even more people and let even more people know that they are loved by God, as together we heal and rebuild. We help Indigenous people to save their languages and preserve their culture. We encourage young people's creativity. We work for justice. And we tell stories for reconciliation. and so much more. As together, we make a real difference in the lives of people across Canada and around the world. We can only do this together. So I invite you to join myself and so many others and make your gift today to Mission and Service. Thank you. Thank you for the ways that you share in the ministry of all of us that happens through mission and service. Thank you, and amen. Mm -hmm.